Hello, I'm very excited to be starting back um, on this shed project. Now you might remember the craft shed series that I did last time, very different to this one, but the structure of it is the same. And you'll find the tutorials to make the shed um, in my list of videos, so if you'd like to have a go at making it, do have a look. And I'm going to be doing a couple of these, um, just to give you some different ideas of how to decorate your shed. So this one is going to be um, a very messy, old garden shed, sort of abandoned shed. Everything just sort of thrown inside, higgledy-piggledy. And the next piece I've made to go inside is this rather aged, um, shabby looking cupboard. There's a missing door, missing drawer, got sort of um, cup rings on the top there. And I used a piece of wood with a hole already in it, just to make it look extra old. And that will stand over here. So I've put the cutting list um, for this cupboard in the description below. And coming up next is a list of the tools and materials you'll need. And then we'll get started. So we're going to begin by gluing a leg to either side of each of the side pieces. So I've got some glue here which I've dispensed onto a piece of card and I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it. So begin by applying it along each long edge of the side piece. And we're keeping this really simple, no mouldings or anything like that, we don't want it to look too attractive. Pop that back down on your work surface and then just attach a leg to either side so that the top of each piece is flush. So you've got a nice straight line along that top edge. And then you can turn that and press it together, just making sure to keep that straight top edge. And again, I'm just going to bring in those spare 5x5 five five strips. And I just find it helps when. Um, pressing pieces like this together where you haven't really got a lot to hold on to. So squeeze that together and you can hold on to it as well while you bring in your spare cocktail stick to remove the excess glue. And then just very carefully push that piece along your worktop and that can be left to dry. And I'll do the other side but I just want to show you the piece of wood that I've used for the side and it came to me um, from the manufacturer like this and it's obviously where the cutter has got a bit hot and it's singed the wood and gone through there and sometimes it's a bit annoying but in projects like this it can actually come in quite handy so I've purposely sort of cut around that to use for the side of the cabinet and I want this to be on the right hand side so that it's visible when it's in place in the shed. So sometimes it's nice to look out for little knots or defects in the wood to use when you're making sort of old pieces of furniture. So same thing again, apply glue along each long edge. Pop it back down and attach the legs so you've got a flush edge along the top. those into place and then again I'll just bring in these bare pieces of strip wood to press that all together. Remove the excess glue and that piece can be pushed over there to dry with the first piece. Get rid of those. Okay so whilst they're drying bring in your back piece and turn it so that the grain runs from top to bottom. That so we can draw a line um, 13 millimetres or 33 64ths of an inch from what will become the top edge. So just do a little pencil mark at either edge of the wood. And 
and then turn it back the right way and join that up. And just position the rule just below the pencil marks just to allow the thickness of your pencil nib. And then we want to do a little line in the centre of that top section and that's just for the placement of the draw divide. So do a little mark at the top and bottom of that section and then you can join those up like that. Pop that to one side and bring in two of these three pieces so we've got a top, a bottom and a shelf. So we want two of those pieces, the top and the shelf, and we're going to draw a line down the centre again of the short edge. And again this is for that draw divide placement. So make your little pencil marks at each edge and then turn it to join the line up. And when you do so just go on to the front and back edge of the piece of wood and that will really help us when the piece is in place. The same on the shelf piece. Join that up and continue the line like that. So when you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, bring your side pieces back in turn them over and put them onto their side like that and we're going to do that pencil line again 13 millimeters or 33 64 of an inch from the top edge and the top edge is the straight edge and these are our sort of feet down here so again do the little pencil lines and you only have to do it on that um, side piece and not the legs Turn them round and join your lines up through that hole. And that one as well. So we're now going to begin construction. So take your back piece and apply glue along the side. And then we're going to glue this to the front of that back leg. So we want it towards the sort of join where the back leg meets the side piece. So press that into place, making sure you've got that straight line there. Once that's dried a bit, I'll show you from the top view so you can see how that's attached. Remove the excess glue that's coming out at the back there. There'll be a little bit of a lip along the back, the same on the inside, let's see if I can show you. So the back piece is sitting towards the front of that back leg, so you've got that lip at the back there. Okay, and then bring in your top piece and that's one of the pieces with the pencil line on and that's going to sit on the inside edge of those joined pieces and so that the pencil line is on the inside of the unit. So apply glue to the long and the short edge. And then pop that into place so you've got a nice flush edge along the top there. And then you can pull that back piece in to meet it and that will square the whole thing up. Make sure it's sitting right into that corner. Like that. Press it into place. Hold it for a moment. And you can use again the spare cocktail stick to remove any excess glue. And then lay the piece down on the top like that. And then bring in your um, draw divide and that's going to sit centrally over that line on both pieces. So apply glue to the short and long edge. Just slide that into place. 
again, getting that back right into that corner. Press it down and you can just turn it and make sure that it's level. And it should be sitting centrally below that little line we made there on the front edge of the top piece. So now apply glue along the sort of bottom edge of that divide. Like that. And then bring in the shelf piece, and that's the other piece that we've done the pencil line on. And that's going to sit in there. We're using that line on the back just as a guide, so it should be sort of straight with that line. So again, apply glue to a long and a short edge. And you can stand the piece back up again if it's easier. And then put that one into place. Push it towards the back. And then you can look from the front angle just to make sure that the divide is sitting centrally over that pencil line. Press the shelf up to the divide. If your unit feels a bit wonky, you can just stick the top piece under there just to use it as a bit of a, a wedge. Pull that in like that. Press it all together. Don't forget to remove your excess glue. This is on the inside, so it won't really show, but it's just it's just a good habit to get into. Gives for a much neater finish. Like that. And then we can glue the bottom piece into place, but we'll sit on the inside edge there like that. And I purposely sort of didn't sand these pieces after I'd cut them either, just because I don't want um, the unit to look sort of too neat and tidy. I want it to look like it's been stood in a maybe a damp old shed for quite a while. Press it into the corner. I've left that um, top piece under there as well as a bit of a wedge just to hold that up just because you've got that lip on the back leg it won't lay flat on your worktop. You don't have to use the piece you've cut, you can use a spare piece of wood. Press that all together. Make sure you've got a nice flush edge along there and along the back as well. I just need to push that in a little bit more. And you've got a bit of time before the glue dries so you can sort of jiggle things about a little bit. And then turn it onto its side. And then you can apply glue along these sort of side exposed edges. And then you can attach, I was going to lay it down but I won't, and then you can attach the remaining side. So sort of get it level at the top there and the bottom as well and you should have a nice flush edge along here. I just realised that hole is right across that um, drawer shelf. That's okay, so it actually makes it look quite interesting with that bit of shelf showing. Squeeze it all together and then I'm just going to grab a bit of masking tape and I'm going to hold that all together whilst the glue is drying. So I just actually want to put a couple of pieces straight over like that. Pull it nice and tight. I'm going to put a piece across the bottom edge as well. Just got one more piece here so I'll stick that on as well and just put it right over the side like that. And that will hold it all nice and square while the glue dries. So that can now be left until the glue has dried. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry you can remove the masking tape and then I've just given that a quick sand again all the way around. And then I just want to gently round over the edges of the top piece before I attach it. And I'm going to do that just holding it in my hand, fine grade piece of sandpaper, and just go along one long edge, which will become the front edge, on both sides. Just sort of hold the paper at a 45 degree angle and sweep it along that edge. Same along the front. The other side. 
and then turn it over and do the same thing on the underside and then you can just sort of curve over the corners as well like that and you can see there I've used sort of the next part of that wood that was slightly singed um, for the top I'll be using um, wood dye but that will still hopefully show through a little bit so apply glue to the top of the unit I just need to put a little bit more glue on my card there and apply that to the top make sure you get it right along the edges and into the corners on the top of those legs like that and then you want the straight edge so the unrounded one to be at the back and that should be flush with the back of the legs and then you've got an even overhang at either side. So just make sure that's straight or flush along the back there with the leg. And an even overhang at either side. That would just be a, uh, probably about a millimetre if that. Press that down. And you can just sort of hold it into place while you use a cocktail stick to remove the excess glue and I've got some masking tape here I'm going to stick a piece right over the top like that pull it nice and tight and then I'm going to just stick a couple of pieces over that back as well it's a bit long that piece I'll tuck it underneath piece there, just so that doesn't rise while the glue is drying. And then at the front here I'm going to use clamps. And you always need to clamp things together while the glue is drying because the wood will try to sort of separate. The top piece will try to lift up and then you'll always have that gap there. And these clamps, I sell actually sell these in my Etsy shop. And they're really good because they're really tight, so they, they've got a really good grip. And I think you can I think it's a pack of eight. And at quite a good price as well. So do have a look if you need some of the clamps. And once again that piece can be left to dry while we get on with making our door and drawer. Okay, so we'll start with the door and I want to begin by beveling each edge of the door moulding. So have the sandpaper on your worktop, hold the moulding at an angle, a 45 degree angle, and just sweep it towards you. Just starting to bevel off there. So do that until you've got a nice even bevel. do that on each edge like that and then we're going to attach that centrally to the door now I'm just going to do that by eye but if you'd rather measure then you can put a little um, pencil line at, at the top and bottom and at each side so that you've got an even border around the outside So apply glue to the back flat edge of the moulding. Attach that to the door. Check that it's where you want it to be. Press it into place. Remove the excess glue. And you've got a moment to sort of move that around if it's sort of moved out of place or anything if you're not happy with the positioning. And then once again I'm using clamps to hold that into place while the glue dries. Again that's important otherwise the moulding will curl away from the door. Now I don't know if you can hear it but outside it's blowing a gale. It's been sort of dark rainy day all day. And now it's just half past four. Looks like night time out there. 
Hello. <laughs> Okay, so now for the drawer, and again in the cutting list I advise that you cut the pieces needed for the drawer after construction of the unit, and that's just so that you get a more accurate fit. So once you've constructed the unit, measure the drawer opening, you want the um, width, the height and the depth, and then just um, deduct about half a millimetre, if that, from those dimensions, just so that the drawer slides in and out easily. So begin by applying glue along each edge of the base. Pop that piece back down and attach the sides. You want a nice flush edge at the front and back along here and here. Press those into place and just very carefully slide that along your work surface so it doesn't stick and that can just be left to dry for a moment so that we can handle it without it falling apart and then you can apply glue to each of those exposed edges like that, pop that piece back down Oops. and then attach front and back pieces, making sure you've got a nice flush edge along each side. That piece as well. Carefully squeeze it all together. Keep those sides upright. And then again that piece can be left to dry. You can then remove the clamps from your door piece. I'm now going to drill a hole for the doorknob. So I've got this little wooden knob here which is 2.5 millimetres in diameter. And I'm going to use this pin drill to drill the hole. So begin by making a pencil mark in the centre along one of the long edges. And that's centrally lengthways, like that, little line, and then turn it, and you can just do a little dot in the centre, widthways. And then I just sort of erase the mark that I've made, and the little pencil dot will then stay there. So I've got a 1.5 millimetre bit in the drill, and that's 1 16th of an inch. So just position that on top of your pencil mark and twist. Once the door starts twisting round that means you're through and then I just sort of jiggle that around a bit just to fit the little stem of the doorknob. So check that it goes in easily first and then you can just apply a little dot of glue into the hole just to secure it. Press that in like that, making sure it's flat against the door. Remove any excess glue around the edge. And then we're going to be cheating with this door, so we are actually just going to be gluing it into place there. And then, before I apply the wood die, I just want to make some little um, cup rings on the top. Now we did this in the construction of the shed, if you remember. But to do that you'll need a plastic tube, or you could use a straw. And I'm just going to dip it, dip the end into the glue like that. And then sort of tap it so that the centre of the glue comes out. And then you can just do that wherever you like on the top. Twist it so you know you've got a complete ring. And you might want to then do maybe a couple together. Do one overlapping like that. I'm going to put another one over there edge. Twist it round to get the sort of full circle. 
do another one beside it. It doesn't matter, just be really random with them. Where people may have sort of placed a cup or a mug. Like that. And then the idea is that when we apply the um, wood dye or the varnish, it won't take over the glue. So once the glue on the drawer has dried, you can sand that on all edges. And I always sand on the top and bottom as well, um, just by going around in circular motions like that on the paper. And then check that that fits nicely into place. If not, you might need to do just a little bit more sanding. Now, if you want to um, attach a draw knob, then you can do that now. But I'm probably going to use a brass pull on there. So I'll wait until I've um, used the wood die on the piece. So that actually is now ready um, to varnish or, or use wood dye on or paint or whatever you're going to do with it. Okay, so I've used wood dye on all three pieces and that's actually been drying overnight. So I can now attach the door. Let's bring in the glue. So you want to apply glue around three edges of the door. That and then just slot that into place at the edge there. Press it against the edge and then sort of press the, the shelf and the bottom piece up to it. I'm removing glue with my finger again, which I shouldn't be doing, so I'll just hold that into place for a moment, then I'll get a cocktail stick and remove. The excess glue coming through. And that's the door. Okay, so for the drawer handle, I've just got this little sort of brass um, pull. And I want to attach it at a bit of an angle, so I'm using my normal wood glue. Pop a little bit on each side and I'm not even going to measure I'm just going to stick it like that and I want it to look as though it's sort of falling off do that like that and then I'm just going to grab my scribe tool and I'm just going to make a little nail hole sort of over here which is where the handle would have originally been attached just lay that down, get a better hold on it. Just go like that. And again, it's one of those tiny little details that can then be put into place. Now, as you can see, I have um, used the wood dye on the inside of the drawer openings. And usually I advise not to if you're using paint or varnish. But that's because the paint or varnish will actually add a layer um, to the inside, which will affect the size of the drawer opening and you won't be able to get your drawer back in. But with wood dye, it's fine to do that, and then you don't get any of that sort of clear wood showing around the edges. So, I'm just gonna bring the shed in now, and we'll pop that into place. And that will sit over there. Like that. And this is gonna be a lot of fun, decorating this one. I always think that making things look messy um, and old is more fun than sort of doing all the neat, neat and tidy bits and pieces. So I've got lots of ideas for this one. So if you're making a garden shed rather than a craft shed, then do sort of subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos. Can I say lots more to come? We're really going to jam pack this one. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please do give it a thumbs up, that would be appreciated. And if you enjoy making dolls house furniture and miniatures, you might like to have a look at my books. I've published four of them so far. They're all available to purchase from Amazon. Just search for Julie Warren and you'll find them. And for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.